You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 21. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset tools and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go. Dating. Isn't it something we're either good at or not? Something you can't really sit down and learn. You either got it or you don't. If you think so, you might be positively surprised today. Because it's definitely a skill that you can learn. And even if you think you know how to do it, you can become even better. Learning the skills of dating is not only going to help you attract the right person faster, it's also going to save you frustrations on the journey. And like any result we create in life, knowing that you did that and you can take credit for that gives you a lot more confidence than if you believe you were just lucky. And it's always good to know that you can do it again if necessary. So today I'm going to explain to you why I think it's so important to get yourself out there and practice dating skills. And I'm going to give you some concrete tips on how to do that. But before we dive into today's topic, I want to invite you to give me a review if you like this podcast. Go to Apple Podcast and write me a review and give me five stars if you want. This would make me really super happy. And each month I will offer a free power coaching session of 30 minutes to one of you and I will announce the winner here on the podcast. And it is my big pleasure to say that today I will announce the first winner. And that is Katie from Scotland. And Katie writes, excellent podcast for single women. I found this podcast by accident and I'm so pleased I did. The content is excellent, well presented and the episodes focus on really helpful topics. Keep up the good work, Lærke. Sending you all the positive vibes. Katie from Scotland. Thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate it and I feel the positive vibes. It encourages me to continue this work. So, Katie, if you are listening to this episode, I want to invite you to ping me on Instagram. Send me a message over there. I'm at Lærke the Love Coach. Or send me an email. I'll put the email address in the show notes so we can connect. And I can make sure you get your prize because you are up for a treat. You are up for 30 minutes one-to-one coaching with me. And you can bring anything that's related to dating or relationships. And I will give you my best advice and my best coaching. So let's talk dating skills. We all know that there are things in life you can learn by watching YouTube videos and reading books or listening to podcasts. And then there are other things that require you to go out and do it many times over and over until you master it. Riding a bike is one example. And another one is dating. Connecting with a man online, having a brief exchange in the chat, going on dates, having interesting conversations with a stranger, so to speak, and then evaluating the date and course correct. That's all skills. Staying open to possibility, allowing yourself to be positively surprised on date number 35, even if the 34 others were not what you were looking for. That's the mindset you need, and in a way it's also a skill to cultivate and stay committed to that mindset. I like to find comparisons that can illustrate the point and I am someone who owned several apartments in my life. Not at the same time, I was never that rich, but I have gone through the process of buying an apartment several times and every time I went to visit a number of apartments before I decided which one was right for me. And it's kind of something you know when you buy an apartment. For many of us, it's never the first one you visit that's going to be the right one. In the beginning, you need to go and see a couple of flats to get a feeling of what is even out there. And then you will find out what to look for. What are particular features that are important to you? Do you want a balcony? Are you dreaming of a big bathroom or an open kitchen? Do you want parquet on the floors or do you want tile? And what are the questions you need to ask to know more about the state and the quality of the apartment and the whole building as well? Like what kind of heating system is there? Is there a saving in the owner's association for maintenance of the common areas? 
Is there a maintenance plan? When is the last time the roof was renovated? And so on. So don't try to make any direct comparison to a man here. That would make it a little bit bizarre. But then in the process of visiting flats, you might realize that although you thought you wanted a flat on the last floor, you actually prefer one on the ground floor because then you can have a garden. Or although you thought a big bathroom was important, now that you've seen a flat with the most beautiful wooden floors, this feels more important to you. But you wouldn't know from visiting just one or two apartments. My point is that your ability to know what you want and evaluate a connection with a man becomes better when you go on several dates. And I don't mean for you to massively date unconsciously, that would only end up draining you. But allow yourself to do a number of dates as practice dates with no expectations of finding Mr. Right. Just dates that you go on to get into the habit of connecting and chatting online, meeting in person, having conversations, asking great questions to break the ice, building connection with a person you've never met and then reflecting afterwards. What did you like about him and what didn't you like and why? What did you think of him in terms of partner potential and what are you building that on and do you like your reasons? Investigate your thoughts and challenge them if you don't like your reasons. And then there's the principle of just getting started. Getting started and taking the first few steps of any journey is sometimes the hardest. You need to get yourself over the hurdle. And in order to do that, you need to lower the pressure of your own expectations. You need to make it just about practicing and not finding Mr. Right. Because what happens otherwise, and what I often see with women who've been outside of dating for a long time, is that your brain will come up with all the reasons why you don't feel like going on a date with this guy, you're not really attracted to this other guy, and the third guy, he doesn't have the right age, and so on. And then you end up wanting to have a clear idea that this could be him before you even want to have coffee with someone. And that's just never going to happen. Because nobody knows from a profile picture that he is the one. It basically never happens like that. And also, your brain is doing everything it can to keep you safe in your comfort zone. So, I want to encourage you to decide that the first maybe 5 or maybe even 10 dates is just for you to get over the hurdle. Get yourself out there again and practice the skill of dating. Your willingness to go on date, even if he isn't Mr. Right, is going to be one of the most determining factors for whether you will eventually find him. Because it's when you are out there and going on a lot of dates, you become better at dating and you also become better at recognizing the right person. And knowing you have the skill of getting a date anytime you want, that will also create an abundance in your dating life. You will feel less attached to having things to go a certain way because you know you can always get a date. So here are my concrete tips for you. In your first month of dating, challenge yourself to go on two or three dates per week. And here we're going to be focusing on online dating as this is the most time efficient way to get a date. Practice connecting in the app. Count on connecting maybe twice as many as you want to go on dates with. And then set a goal to be invited by two or three men per week. Let them know that you would like to have a conversation in person. Prepare what to say and what to ask him to make it a good date. Now, avoid this interviewing style, but you still want to ask a few questions to get to know him more. And then focus on showing him a side of you that you find important. For instance, if you have a great sense of humor and you want to find a man who gets that and who also has a great sense of humor, You will have to throw in some fun comments or you will have to rock the boat a bit and crack a joke to see how does he react to that. And also you want to practice noticing how you feel on the date. Are you able to relax and be yourself? And if not, then why? What's getting in your way? So afterwards you want to evaluate and ask yourself how you experienced the connection between you. How did the conversation go? What were some things that you liked about him? And is there anything you would do differently next time? Basically, you can go and listen to my episode on Discovery Mindset. It's episode 18, and here I give you some advice on how to enjoy your dates when you approach them from an open and curious mindset. And also, you want to set a time limit for dates, especially first dates. You always want to keep them short. Now, 
It's really important that you let go of expectations for these practice dates. Because then what happens is that once you get over the hurdle, after maybe five dates, and you manage to do them without any other expectations than you are just practicing dating, I promise you, you will feel differently about dating. You will be more open, you will be more confident, and you will also be more clear on what you want in a partner. On the other hand, if you go on five fast dates and you have in the back of your mind an expectation of one of these being the right guy, you will not feel energized from it. You will feel drained and discouraged. So it's really important to decide to see it as an experiment. A date rehearsal. No expectations of you finding the right guy. This is just you getting into the game practicing the dating skills and getting comfortable with meeting new people and having meaningful conversations with them. So this is what I had for you today. And if you want someone to support you and be there next to you while you get yourself out there, I can help you. I offer as part of my program access to me in between sessions through an app that's called Voxer. And here you can reach me 24-7. You can use voice message, you can use text, whatever works for you. And It's perfect for when you're starting dating again, because you might need a little pep talk before a date and you might need to bounce a few thoughts after a date. And it's like having your coach in your pocket. And that's only part of the program, because the main part is, of course, the one-to-one sessions that we do every week. And one of the things we work on in my program is building dating skills, knowing what to look for, what is important for you, and how to evaluate a connection with a man and find out how invested he is in you and if he is emotionally available. So if you're curious to know more about how I can help you, then book a call with me and let's talk. You can go to my website, lærkethelovecoach.com, or you can just click on the link in my show notes. And Lærke is L-A-E-R-K-E. So until next time, enjoy dating and have a beautiful week. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you'll also help other women find it. 